Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I was not planning on doing another video today. I actually did a video on my fir first full self-driving with Tesla Beta 10.12.2, and it went very, very well. We're actually on vacation right now, which is why you're only getting a screen grab of this instead of my ugly face too. So <laughs> you, can, you can thank being on this trip. It's kind of a work trip anyway, but uh, so, so anyway, definitely check out that video if you haven't yet, but there were some interesting tweets from Elon Musk and uh, James Dama and some others last night that I woke up to and I was like, oh, this is really interesting stuff. And Elon's revealed some very useful information, so I just wanted to do a quick video on that and try to explain what's going on here. So this started out with Jeff, and really his question does not pertain to what Elon answered, but it was interesting. He said, Elon, please add software release notes into the Tesla app. It would be nice to see what is new right from your phone. So what that means is like when you get a new software release, you actually see it, but it's only on the screen in the Tesla itself. You don't get it on the, the app on your phone. <clears throat> so it would actually be really nice to be able to have it on your phone. Elon, however, did not answer directly that question. He answered something very different. He said, we're using more GPTs as they now run natively on Tesla trip chip versus needing to round trip to the iGPU. So uh, generative pre-trained transformers, this is something that OpenAI has been working on. GPT-3 might be something that you would have heard about. It's a, a I guess, famous um, generative pre-trained transformer. It's got 174 billion parameters, if I remember correctly. In other words, in other words it's an absolutely massive um, network that they're doing. Now, I'm not saying that GPT-3 is what the Tesla is using here, but I just wanted to put that as a contextual element there. So anyway, uh, running natively on Tesla trip chips. Okay, so Tesla Hardware 3 has a whole bunch of chips in it, and one of those you know, sub chips is the trip chip. I can't remember for the life of me what it stands for, but it's some acronym. But basically, it is a neural network operating uh, does neural network operations as opposed to a GPU. So you can see that needing to round trip to the iGPU, that's the GPU that's on board on the Tesla Hardware 3. And the, the deal is that it is just faster essentially to run, instead of having to run some of the calculations on the trip chip, which has neural network uh, architecture on it, and then also some of the code on the GPU, and having to round trip all that stuff, it's actually much faster to run it all natively on the trip chip, and um, also the code is it just runs faster on on things that are designed for that. So neural network, or excuse me, GPUs were designed specifically <clears throat> to be used for gaming and rendering polygons and stuff. And people in artificial intelligence just realized that that was a very similar type of calculation to what you do when you are working on the the cross product, excuse me, the dot product and ads for doing uh, the whole giant matrix multiplication thing. That is the central part of doing deep neural network training. And so they they were like, oh, we can use this, but it's not ideally suited for it. So things like the Apple M1 chip, Tesla's hardware three, whole bunch of other. Uh, 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 you know, Google's, um, what do they call it, Tensor Core. Anyway, there's a bunch of new hardware that's been designed specifically for AI training, and that's what the trip chip is versus the GPU. So the GPU, really good for rendering out stuff on a screen like what you're seeing right now, but it's not as good, it's not ideally optimized for doing AI training. So anyway, you want to use something that's I ideally optimized for AI training if possible and that's what the trip chip actually is. And plus the fact you don't have to round trip this, you don't have to pull things out of memory, go into the trip chip, go to the iGPU, back to the trip chip, back to memory. So it's just saving a whole bunch of latency, which is exactly what KL Manish actually said here. He said, the trip chip is an AI chip that eliminates the need for an external GPU, which is what we were just talking about. The trip chip will perform AI computation, cutting down the latency to and from the GPU plus trip chip. It's built, it's built for heavy duty AI workloads Again, it's more optimized than a GPU is. And then he says, it must be a huge improvement compared to NBSB on MB latency, right, Elon? I uh, don't know. I look, try to look up what NBSB was, but I think what he's talking about is the amount of megabytes of or megabits of latency, etc. I I could I, I could not quite figure out exactly what these three acronyms were. Um, anyway, Elon very uninformatively said yeah, or I guess informatively said yeah to that. But anyway, so it basically has to do with latency. Essentially, this all runs much more efficiency because efficiently because you're not round tripping things from the trip chip 
to the GPU, back to the trip chip. You're running it all natively on the trip chip. Then we have James Dauma, who jumped in on this on a slightly different thread. And uh, so <laughs> he's amazing. If you haven't seen my conversations with him, uh, you should definitely check them out or my conversation with him. I'm hoping to have another one with him soon because I really want to talk about a lot of this stuff in more detail. Anyway, he said, wait, you're using generatively pre-trained transformers seriously for vision, <laughs> right? And that is a pretty wild thing. Again, because if you think about GPT-3, GPT-3 is a massive, massive uh, neural network model, but I'm going to get to that in just a second. Then we have more on radar, which is a great name, by the way. He said, I remember Carpathy mentioning that Tesla is using GPTs for identifying lanes in complex intersections. And that indeed is the case uh, that I think it was AI day where he talked about the fact that they were, they were steering towards using uh, gener pre generative pre-trained transformers. But I think he was focused more on transformers. And that's when, you know, James said, you're right, I, did, I didn't take that earlier comment to mean that they were actually doing the GP part of GPTs, just that it was a transformer. But now that I think about it, it would actually make sense to use a GP for a lane prediction transformer. So, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on that for just a minute because I wanna you know, deal with Elon's last little tweet here. Also, he said, transformers are replacing C heuristics for post-processing of the vision neural networks, giant bag of points. Side note, I hate the bloated mess that is modern C++, but love simple C, as you know what it will compile to in terms of actual CPU operations. So, and, and as a side note, by the way, I love C also. I think C is a great programming language. It's very, very primitive. It's very procedural, not object oriented at all. And it's got a lot of memory issues. So it's a bit of a cruel master in terms of learning how to use it properly, but it is super super duper fast so it's really really nice if you can you know if you can get it working properly so anyway okay so let's let's deal with with what what james here said and what elon responded to so essentially uh, transformers can be used without generative pre-trained they're just an architecture that neural networks have it's a very modern architecture it's a new thing it's sort of taken over from lstms and and things like that uh, but in uh, Carpathia, I remember when he talked about it, he said they were going to be using um, uh, spatially based, based transformers. Transformers originally were designed for language based models, which means the models that you're trying to predict. Like if you said, you know, the, the red cat walked down to the store or something random like that. If you put that into a, 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 a transformer, a transformer will then predict what the next words are in the sentence. And it's very, very useful to have that sort of information in a language model. But then people started going like, wait, we can do this visually as well because we can give spatial information about where pixels are in an image or a video. And then we can do things like transform that and we can predict what is in spaces where it's not available so we can fill in gaps and things. So anyway, Transformers are a really interesting part of that. The generative pre-trained part just means that you actually use an adversarial network to pre-train this thing. So you create a, a sort of a general model. <clears throat> so what you're doing, as opposed to creating a very specific neural network to solve a specific problem, these GPTs actually are designed to solve a generalized problem. They are designed to essentially do anything. So the pre-training part means that you pre-train them to just be good. <laughs> so I guess it'd be like a human being going to like elementary school. You, you, you're just good. You have a general knowledge of geography and math and English and or, or whatever language you study. You know, you have general knowledge of that kind of thing. And then what you do over the next four or eight or 12 or 16 years or whatever, depending on what you're doing, is you specialize and specialize and specialize. So the GPT part is sort of getting you up to the end of like elementary school and then <clears throat> And then what you do is you take that model and you fine tune it or you overfit it to different potential applications. In this case, as James is talking about, it would make a lot of sense to use generative pre-training for lane predictions because lane predictions are, are, are very complicated as is object predictions. And then Elon Musk's response to that is that what we're, they're doing is see heuristics. What heuristics means is basically guesses. It's human beings kind of saying like, oh, this is the way it should be. <clears throat> so you could think of it as if then statements. Uh, you could do a, a heuristic could be something along the lines of if you see a bunch of 
you know, black pixels that move across the screen at this rate, it's probably a car, then do this, right? That is a pretty inefficient way of doing things in the real world because there are so many different if then statements you have to do. So heuristics are, they, that's what everybody used for a long, long time. They're not that good at solving real world full self-driving because it's too complicated. So what we're doing instead is we're moving over to uh, processing, to post-processing the giant bag of points. So you've got eight cameras, they're running at I think 30 frames per second, 36 frames per second, something along those lines. So they're taking in all this data and what you have is a giant bag of points, which is basically just colors, colored pixels all over the place. And then what you're doing is you're processing that from the raw visual data into a vector space. I've done a bunch of videos on this stuff. You should definitely check that stuff out. I go into a lot more detail, but basically it's transforming a raster world, of just a, a bunch of pixels into a vector world, into something where you actually have objects and you understand what those objects are in space as a car or a light pole or a lane, etc. And what we're getting here is that we're getting evidence now from Elon Musk that they're using generative pre-trained networks to then work on that vision post-processing section. And this is actually very exciting news. Now, are they using GPT-3? Very unlikely. 174 billion parameters is a crap ton of parameters. And it's very unlikely that something like that is going to fit into the mobile processor that is hardware three. So the more likely is that they've got their own generative pre-trained transformer that they created themselves. It's much more specialized and much more efficient. And then of course it probably, you know, I, I just, you know, taking a wild number, pulling it out of my butt, you know, 50 billion parameters or, or, or 5 billion parameters or something huge like that. There could be a ton of that, um, uh, of that amount of um, parameters on what they're training, but the one they can do is they can refactor that by maybe a factor of 10 or something to make the neural network that's actually deployed in the hardware in your car much, much smaller. So remember that that deployment model only has to operate it doesn't have to train, it doesn't have to have any kind of, of layers that allow it to do the training and get better at it, it only has to function. And that functionality, of course, is very, very um, you know, critical and it is time critical as well, but it doesn't have to be as accurate and it doesn't have to have all the training you know, cruft built in. So it can be refactored, it could be much smaller and run much quicker. So the likelihood, <clears throat> It's very, very, very unlikely that they're using GPT-3 to do this. What they most likely did is built their own GPT, and, and which is a very you know vision-centric one that they built themselves and is kind of custom-coded, and then they generatively pre-trained it, basically just threw as much data as they could at it, and pre-trained it to do whatever it does, and now what they can do is they can, they can sort of uh, overfit it to different things. For example, post-processing the vision neural network. So it can, it can work on different tasks, like you could take the GPT and then you could overfit it to cars and you could overfit it to lane lines and you could overfit it to golf carts. <laughs> I just had an experience with golf carts driving around yesterday when, with the full self-driving and it doesn't really understand what a golf cart is, or at least it can't visualize it. So anyway, it, you know, you get that kind of stuff and what you can do is overfit the GPT to those different circumstances to be able to pull out the different things that you want. Anyway, this is a lot of really, really geeky stuff, but I absolutely love it when Elon Musk gets into the, into the fray about this thing. I just checked right before I filmed this and he did not respond to any further to any of these things. So if there are updates, of course, I will, you know, do another video about that. But in the meantime, I thought I would pass this along. And again, if anybody can tell me in the comments or whatever what NB slash SB on MB latency is, I do not know what those things actually stand for. I, I know what latency is, I just don't know what the rest of it is. So anyway, if you have that, that information, definitely let me know. In the meantime, everybody have a lovely day and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye.